Hey friends, Blue Potato here to talk to you guys about the support roll. This match is going to have some wild cards, but I have Leona to help me out to secure the win. This video will be a lot more in depth than my previous videos, and I want you to comment to see if you prefer this style of breakdown or my previous version of rapid fire content. Going forward, I'm going to call first ability Q, second ability W, third ability E, and ultimate just ult. This is so I can easily talk about a team fight and what's happening without pausing a lot or getting tongue tied. So let's talk about Leona's abilities. Leona's passive is called Sunlight. When I use an ability on an enemy, it puts a mark on them that my team can pop for extra damage. Leona's Q. It stuns an opponent for one second, deals bonus damage, and applies Sunlight. Her W allows her to gain temporary armor and magic resist, and then does damage to nearby enemies after 3 seconds. Her E, if it hits an enemy champion, roots them and takes Leona to them. It's a great combination to use E and Q to stun lock opponents. And lastly, her ultimate. Deals damage in an area, slows people in the outer portion, and stuns people in the inner portion for 1.5 seconds. Now that you know the abilities, when I use them or combine them, you're going to hear something like say, I'm going to E Q into the enemy, and it'll make sense, or at least I hope it will make sense. Time to talk about the runes I am running this match. First up, Aftershock. It's a very good with Leona, since her entire kit revolves around stuns. After stunning an opponent, I gain armor and magic resist for 2.5 seconds, then explode to deal magic damage. It's like an enhanced W. Weakness, to deal extra damage to the champions that I stun. Conditioning, to continuously gain armor and magic resist as the game goes on. And the last minute change to Genius, which gives me cooldown for every unique enemy takedown. Assists also count. Now let's take a look to see what RNG Jesus has in stock for me today. During lobby, Pantheon went to jungle and Ash said no. He still took smite, so now we have double smite. In our lane, Dragon lane, it will be Misfortune and Leona versus Caitlyn and Teemo. Teemo is an oppressive support that will continuously poke down enemy ADCs with his blinding dart and passive poison. To win this lane, we need to find moments where Teemo is mispositioned and go all in. The only variable I can't account for is Misfortune's reaction time and engagement time. I cut off the time where we considered a remake since Pantheon AFK'd at the start. Pantheon was determined to jungle and forced Ash to go Baron lane. It's a rough start, and I know this is a common occurrence in many games. Back in our lane, you'll see Misfortune walking directly into a trap that she saw. Very interesting decision. She's burning a lot of mana for no reason. This is an early sign that my ADC is unreliable. Now that we're level 2, I have both my E and Q, so I'm going to look for an engage. Upcoming is the first battle breakdown with EQW. I land an EQ combo on Teemo. Once he's unstunned, he hits me with his blinding dart. Misfortune uses her make it rain, and I use heal to speed up Misfortune to get the kill. Now at this point, most people will recall but I'm confident that I can get my EQ combo on Caitlyn, we can secure a second kill. We get the combo off and manage to get the kill. Leona is one of those supports that needs an ADC to go all in with her. If you hesitate, Leona is a sitting duck. On the way back to lane, I see Misfortune change course from dragon lane to mid lane. In my experience, supports drop what they're doing to follow them. However, I advise against that. Your lane at this point is free gold and experience points. Sometimes, you just need to let what happens happens, and if she dies, she dies. There's no need to fall behind just because your ADC decides to ignore your lane. If I had followed her to mid lane, Teemo and Caitlyn would have been able to push this turret for free. Misfortune returns to lane, we're both level 5. I plan to engage as soon as possible. Battle breakdown time. This battle is a perfect example as to why sometimes a meta support like Leona is preferred over an off meta support like Teemo. Teemo provides nothing for Caitlyn but additional damage. Once he or she are cut off guard, it will end in one of them dying. This is terrible positioning by Misfortune. She stayed back instead of advancing, giving Caitlyn a chance to escape. I need to be risky and turret dive. We should have just turned back once Caitlyn was safe. Misfortune is aggressive and Shen uses his ultimate. Now at this point, our only option is to kill Caitlyn before Shen arrives. At this point, we need to leave. As a support, my work here is done. The best call is to leave regardless of what your teammates do. And this is what sticking to an unreliable ADC can do through the game. Lee Sin appears out of nowhere, and again, the best advice is to let your allies die, but for science, I'll stay. You got a big shutdown of misfortune and a triple kill. From a free win to an uphill battle. Are you tilted yet? 
because I see so many people get upset at their teammate for stuff like that. Shake it off and restart. Here is what bad communication can do. I ping I'm going after Caitlyn. We waste both of our ults on two different opponents and we don't do anything. For my first item, I purchase Zeke's Convergence. It provides me with both magic resist and armor for this lane. During the laning phase, I constantly ping my ability cooldowns to let Misfortune know when she's safe to engage. It also helps our jungler know when they can come gank our lane for premium assistance. I had wished Pantheon waited a little bit longer for our wave to push into turret. Misfortune here walks right into turret range for no reason, but I'll position myself more aggressively since my ultimate is now off cooldown. I accidentally steal a kill with my ultimate from Pantheon, but I should have used my ultimate on Teemo since Caitlyn was already dead. And again, Misfortune is out of position and sends ult pops onto Teemo this time. I had turret die, but I have to get away. Of course, at this point, it's easy to blame or get upset at Misfortune, but at the end of the day, I decided to engage aggressively, knowing she won't follow up. With a semi-decent gank, we should take this dragon, but nobody is prioritizing this dragon. In fact, instead of getting dragon, Misfortune actually backs. Another bad call from our AVDC. Unfortunately, as Leona, I can't solo dragon. You can see Lee Sin took the Drift Herald. And then he appears barren lane. That means his dragon is free for us to take with smite. But at this point, we wasted so much time the enemy team has returned. If we want this dragon, now there'll be a fight for it. Shen is mispositioned. I let him engage onto me so he can't get away. Usually, Shen engages with his dash, which he does. Typical Leona combo lockdown. Misfortune just did my biggest pet peeve, which is walk right into melee range as an ADC. Since she didn't die here, she probably doesn't realize the mistake she made. But a lot of times... ADCs die in melee range. We finally get dragon and it's back to dragon lane. Here's another good example of why following your teammates is sometimes a bad idea. You see Ash is doing wolves, Lee Sin and Shane are fighting Pantheon. You feel the need to go help. Ignore that feeling. Ash has her ultimate up, but she didn't use it. This fight could have turned out differently, but it didn't happen. At this point I'm trapped, so I hope Ash would react fast enough, but she didn't. This turned out to cost me my life. I should have just stayed in turret and farmed for free. You can't do any good if you're dead. But I've done my job. Misfortune is 5 and 1. But when I return to lane, I realize she's almost dead. She's lucky I react fast because Shen came in like a madman. First thing, I get in between Shen and Misfortune so he can auto me instead. He flashes my E, but he still dies thanks to turret damage. Now, although there's a fiesta in dragon lane, I want you to focus on Ash. Shen is dead, and there's 4 enemy champions in her lane. That means she's free to push Baron lane. Instead... She takes jungle camps. Counter jungling is effective, but it's better to push turrets and take the enemy camps on the way back. I'm not commentating on this team fight because it's just a bunch of nonsense and wasn't going to bring any insight to this video. So instead, I give you a barrel lane tip: don't take jungle camps if your lane is not pushed up. After the team fight, Misfortune is going towards Baron lane, and again, roaming is also important. But we don't even have our first turret taken down. I might sound like a broken record, but it is not important to follow your ADC. Do what's best for yourself and for your team. Lots of people say support shouldn't take minions. My counter argument to that is the ADC shouldn't leave any minion to take. Think about it. If I had left this lane to go help my team, Caitlyn, the enemy attack damage carry, would be free farming. The best thing for my team is to keep her from taking this turret and getting free gold. I'm going to skip ahead because this is a two minute clip of me farming against Caitlyn and it's just boring. Exactly two minutes later, and I'm still alone on my lane. Imagine the damage Kayla would have done to the turret if I had left and gone to my team. She probably would have taken this first turret, and maybe both turrets. Almost three minutes have passed, and Misfortune is finally back in lane. Here's my reasoning for engaging on Caitlyn here. Timo has Rift Herald. You can see that in the game overview menu. And I see Herald is summoned to go down middle lane, which means Caitlyn is alone. This is a free kill for us. Since Teemo did not come to Dragon Lane right after dropping Herald, it is easy to assume they're either pushing mid or taking Dragon. With lack of vision, it's a free Dragon for them. So, a few things go wrong here. Misfortune walks right into the enemy team, Kenan and Pantheon are middle lane, and they should have roamed on us to collapse. Ash is Baron lane, and probably intentionally ignoring the team fights because of Pantheon's earlier behavior. Since Misfortune put herself in a position where I couldn't help her, she inevitably dies. But, I get to get fancy here and get a nice double kill with the help of a turret. So I know a lot of people have questions about itemization. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown as to what I think when I'm going to purchase my next item. You'll see me navigating around the menu for the shop to find Force of Nature. 
But then I think about what the enemy team competition is first to see if buying the Force of Nature is even necessary. I need to look at the damage the enemy team does and build against that type of damage. Everyone on the enemy team is building attack damage except for Teemo, who is 1 in 4. I decide to opt out of Force of Nature, and since I still need movement speed, opt in for Dead Man's Plate instead. So we have a team that does not like to cooperate. What do we do? You can see here that I go in and neither Kennen nor Ash help me, so I disengage and walk away. The only way to play around this is to go in when they decide to do so, not the other way around. At the end of the day, you're still the front line, and that means you can't just let your carries die because they're being silly geese. You can see that I engage after Pantheon goes in. Finally, the rest of the team realizes they should get their act together and engage as well. So we got four kills here. What do you do now? I can't do much as a support, but ping. I do hope that my team won't chase Lee Sin and focus these turrets instead, but you can't have everything. Of course, I'm going to try to do everything I can and siege this turret with zero damage. After Misfortune appears, we take this turret rather quickly. Now it's time to leave since the enemy team will respawn very soon. I'm going to leave MF on her own to die if she wants to overstay her welcome. If she wanted turret, she should have gone there instead of chasing Lee Sin. However, she gets caught out by Lee Sin. I go in despite my own best advice and I die. She also dies later on. Here's a reason why I purchased Dead Man's Plate. Look at how fast I am. It also has a great passive that deals extra damage when you first hit an enemy after moving around so much. Although I was very tempted to go all in on them, I remember that my team will not follow through. I see Dragonlene has a bunch of minions and if nobody wants them, I'll take them myself. Better me than the turret, I say. I plan to push this out, but Misfortune has other plans of going deep into enemy territory and farming minions way ahead of me. She has no backup, but thankfully I get there just in time to save her. Pantheon ults in to do this into a 3v2. Shen also ults in, so now it's a 3v3. And this is a mistake. I assumed Pantheon would be able to handle Teemo by himself, and I also assumed Misfortune can handle Lee Sin by himself. Misfortune actually dies here. We're still chasing for no reason, and Pantheon will actually also die here. This was a very terrible fight that can actually cause the game to go into their favor. That fight ended up with three deaths, Zero kills. Terrible fight. When I respawn, I ping Dragon so we can focus on a huge objective to win the game, but nobody responds to it. So at this point, the only way to win is to feed my team's EOs. If we're being chased, I will help them turn it around. Here you can see that Kennen actually turns around and starts attacking Shen when I get there. Pantheon also comes in. At this point, it's an all-out war. You see I ult Teemo. When Pantheon arrives, he stuns Teemo again and surprisingly doesn't kill him. Here I'll focus on Thresh to remove his Banshee's Veil, and the rest of the team is actually following up very nicely here. I stay aggressive and I keep the enemy team pushed away from Thresh so he can die alone. We win this team fight, and I ping Dragon again to see if we can focus on it. The team insists on getting kills, and Ash actually helps me this time with Dragon. Hooray, sometimes things happen to work out. After chasing for so long, the enemy team actually manages to come back and fight my team again. I was about to help them and realize the situation isn't good, so I take my own advice and let them do their own thing. The fight is so long, I make it back from the fountain to help out. I go in assuming my team has my back, but Ash just walks away. Teemo and Thresha focus me and Caitlyn is coming from middle. Miss Fortune needs to come from Dragon Lane to come, but I don't think she's paying attention. After Kenan and I manage to kill both enemies, Ash returns. We go help Miss Fortune push out this turret. We managed to take an inhibitor turret, but while we chase an overextended Lee Sin, I'm going to take this time to talk about my items. As of this moment, I have purchased Zeke's Convergence, Protector's Vow, Dead Man's Plate, Ionian Boots of Lucidity with Locket, and I will complete Abyssal Mask when I recall. From left to right, Zeke's offers armor and magic resist. When I use my ultimate, it slows down enemies with auto attacks. Protector's Vow offers me HP, and my closest ally gets a shield when I take damage. Dead Man and Plates offers me armor, movement speed, and extra auto attack damage with its passive. Lucidity Boots for cooldown reduction, Lock and Enchantment for extra shields, and Abyssal Mask because Kenna needs help to do more damage. Abyssal Mask offers me magic resist, but its passive makes the enemy take additional magic damage. That's 5 out of 6 item slots. The 6th item I was going to buy was Spirit Visage. However, I changed my mind and decided to purchase Warmogs for sustainability. Warmogs passive allows me to step away from a teamfight and heal up to full HP in mere moments and get back into the action. 
The enemy team comp was mostly attack damage, so I prioritized items to give me armor. However, at this point of the game, Teemo was also a threat, so I needed to build some magic resist. This is why I chose to buy Abyssal Mask. Throughout these past few minutes, my team has gotten their act together and actually gotten some picks off, so we get this Baron practically for free. As a support, it's very easy to get demoralized, especially as a tank support since you really can't do anything if your ADC falls behind. However, I do feel if I had chosen a squishy APC support, we would have lost this game. They needed a frontline, and I offered them that. There's always a time and place for either APC supports or tank supports. Thankfully, I managed to pick correctly this time. You'll notice that Ash's ultimate did not stun Lee Sin. That's because of Edge of Night. Misfortune is pushing and gets a turret but dies. We need to group middle and take this turret, but Ash leaves middle for the enemy jungle camps. Kennen prioritizes red and Pantheon backed. This is totally not going as planned. Please enjoy this clip of me helping Ash get a quadra kill. Well played. Not every game is easy, right? Win conditions are hard to find, and it felt like there really wasn't a win condition in this game. The win condition in this game was the fact that the enemy team made a lot of mistakes. Our team did not have great communication, so if they had only communicated better, they could have won this game. Let's take a moment to thank all of the supports out there who give double, triple, quadra, and penta assists. This game would be so much harder without you guys. Last but not least, don't forget to like and subscribe my channel for more helpful tips on how to play Wild Rift. Have an awesome day, and I wish you an easy climb, summoners. Goodbye for now.